This week we built the last chain plate that goes up on the bow. We built it a little bit differently than the rest of the chain plates. It was really fun, interesting project. And then we also got a visit from Steve, the anchor guy. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. This is where the four stay chain plate is going to come through the deck. So I'm going to cut this little area out. I might have to make it a bit bigger. When I cut out the staysail chain plate area, it was balsa cord. And so I wanted to get rid of all that balsa. If I find the same thing here, I want to get rid of all this balsa as well. But I have to make enough room for the vacuum bag to fit around the chain plate as I build it too. So the hole might grow, uh, but for now what I'm doing is just cutting the initial one. Does that surprise you to find Kevlar? Kinda. I don't know why it would be in the deck. Because I figured it would be in the hull for impact resistance, like for hitting icebergs and stuff. So I'm not sure why it needs to be in the deck as well, but there it is. Super strong. There's foam in the deck here which is good that means I don't have to do a whole bunch of extra invasion so we'll just chip all this out and that's where we'll build the chain plate okay we're ready to laminate this is the four stay chain plate we're laminating this onto the boat rather than building it in the garage and gluing it to the boat we're just building it straight onto the boat and so here's the tube that's glued onto a piece of crucible board at the correct angle uh, that the four stay will go to the mast how it's gonna work is we'll laminate over the tube down onto the knee that's up in the bow. So let's go down and look at the knee that's inside the bow. So this is the knee that we're going to laminate the four stay chain plate onto. This was here for the original four stay chain plate. It was bolted through with stainless plates. We're replacing it with this carbon one and it's just the carbon's going to go from one side up over the tube and then back down the other side and we'll vacuum back the whole thing. So again I'm going to use this Thixo Pro. This is the bigger tube of the uh, thickened epoxy, two to one thickened epoxy. And I'm going to basically prime the area where the chain plate's going to go. Just sweep a thin layer of this stuff on first. This goes first. This is the first layer that goes between the stainless tube and the carbon. And that's because carbon and stainless act as different metals and one corrodes. If I think it's the stainless corrodes. If you don't put an insulator between the carbon and the stainless. So I almost forgot to put this on and it would have been absolutely disastrous if I had forgotten. <laughs> So I would just, I just go like this. I just drop a little bit and that's probably enough. Oh. And if you just go over it real light, I want to be more conservative with this. And so even that, like that I just put on there is more than we need. Okay, so we would have put three on there because you had a yeah. some left over. Three or four. Yeah. 
cook? Pretty good. Pretty good. I tried to say cool and good at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Just, just finish it. smooth this these parts out okay. and then you can drape this one down and so I just I basically fold it in half and just drop it down okay. and so and then so you can smooth it out on top here it's bigger than this it's bigger than four inches and so okay. I'll grab you the scissors and what you can do is just cut a few beats around this edge so that it okay. sets down in there okay. and then and then you can grab the I'll stay down there once we got the peel ply on, you can grab Ready? the yep. uh, release and the felt. Is it thunder? I think it's thunder. Yeah, it's thunder. So we got this done. I think it went really well. It's actually pretty easy getting the laminates on. The hard part was getting the, the vacuum bag on. I'm excited to for it to cure and tear it off. There was a big hole in the deck where the chain plate was built, so I filled it in with some Kusa board. Later, I'll fiberglass over this area to connect it to the rest of the deck. Last week, I just glued the Code Zero chain plate to the stem. We had a few concerned commenters worried that it won't be strong enough. The reason that I can do that is the chain plate itself has a lot of gluing surface area, and we can show mathematically that given a certain amount of surface area, the epoxy is strong enough in shear to hold it. 
and I'm gluing it to a part of the boat that is already structurally sound. Here, on the inner forestay, the chain plate was built on a section of the bulkhead that I had cut out. I glued that part back in with the chain plate on it, but it was not yet part of the structure of the bulkhead in the boat, so here I'm putting a few layers of fiberglass to tie the new part that was glued in to the rest of the boat. Is this the end of the chain plate era? Are you building any more chain plates on the boat? Probably, uh, and that those would be for the running backs, the check stays. So we will have we have a permanent back stay on the boat, but then we'll also have what are called check stays, and those oppose the staysail, and that's for when like we're when the when it's really windy, and we have a big reef in the main, and we're just using the smaller head sail, then we'll use those check stays but they have to be anchored to the boat somewhere too. And so we'll probably build, build chain plates for, for those check stays. Okay, so we'll have a, a, uh, another chain plate era, but is that anytime soon or is that kind of later on in the project? Uh, it has not been on my mind. So uh, it will probably be, there's, we're not in a hurry to do it. Are you in a hurry to do it? No, I'm not in are a you hurry. Excited to get, are you excited to get back to more, <laughs> more carbon chain plates? To be honest, as awesome as they are, I think I'm ready to move on from chain plates. Okay, well, hopefully we'll just take a break and you'll get excited for them again. Uh, I'm sure In I the will. future. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be re-excited with just a little break from chain plates. There's a chance we won't do them either. Oh. We, there, there, there are alternatives, um, but again, any alternative is going to be metal and would penetrate the deck. And so the big advantage to carbon chain plates is that. Yes, yes, we know. There's no I, maintenance. We know. And so that's like when we started talking about this project, one of the goals was to make this boat as little maintenance as possible yeah. for old Matt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the more work we put into it now, the less we're going to do. No, you don't. You don't have future. to persuade me. I'm all for carbon chain plates. Uh -huh. I just need a break. <laughs> you and everybody else. <laughs> One of the incredible things about doing a big boat project in Port Townsend is that this small city is chock full of world class boat builders and boat nerds. Steve is known locally as the anchor guy and he came out to Duracell for a visit. Hey Matt, good to meet you. Nice to meet you Steve. I've been watching a specific YouTube channel called SV Pen Penope. Is that I, I call it Panope, but Panope, excuse me. <laughs> That's all right. And uh, Steve puts together these videos designing or testing anchor systems and anchors. And so we invited Steve over and uh, he's gonna critique our anchoring system. We'll put the link to Steve's channel, SV Penope, right here. Check it out. Steve, you're here from Port Townsend. I and, am. And uh, what do you do here? Uh, I'm actually a shipwright at a local boat building and boat repair firm called Cape George Marine Works. And I do systems and electrical work for the most part. Cool. And so how long have you been doing these anchor testing? Oh, golly. And... It started as just a hobby. Well, really, I just wanted to see what my anchor was doing on the seafloor. I've done over 150 anchor videos so far. Right so, on. But it doesn't, don't have too many viewers, nothing like you or, say, Leo downtown. Sure. It's kind of a small thing. Yeah. Well, I found it extremely useful when I was uh, going through trying to decide what 
was the best anchor for us. And so um, I'm excited to hear what you think of what we have put together so far. Evan and I have spent a lot of time designing and redesigning with the help of the viewers. We're not going to make any big changes to the design of this thing. What do you think, Steve? What are, what are the, some of the, where can we make improvements? After I watched your recent bowsprit video, I did have a couple of ideas that popped into mind. And the first one centers around the fact that Vulcan anchors, when they're in their stowed position, tend to have their center of gravity is quite low. And what it means is when the boat's rocking, they shift back and forth quite a lot. And they often need some other means to stabilize the anchor. And one way to achieve that would be to extend the roller cheeks or these plates, extend them down so that they actually touch the top surface of the fluke. Uh, so that's, that was a suggestion is to extend those downward and then you get the double the double benefit of being able to have a second roller down at this lower position, which additionally stabilizes the anchor. But what it also does, it allows you to move the roller to a lower position, thus allowing different styles of anchor, specifically roll bar anchors. And often a roll bar anchor can't be used on a bowsprit type anchor roller because the roll bar itself will interfere. This is something I immediately disregarded was having a roll bar style anchor because I figured that it would never fit around uh, a big bowsprit like this. But Steve and I were playing around with this one and turns out, now this one's not the right size. We would need something bigger, which is even better but it turns out that they fit. Now this particular anchor fits. There may be other roll bar anchors that it would, the roll bar itself would collide with the end of the bowsprit. And that's the case where a lower position for the bow roller could mean that the anchor could stow completely underneath the bowsprit. So again, that lowered roller cheek would, could, could potentially just give you more options for different styles of anchors in the future. Yeah, so the idea is that the Vulcan would be the uh, most often used anchor, and then we could have a big roll bar anchor like this for, uh, what kind of bottoms were you saying? Where... Yeah, I'm finding, at least around here, for the soft mud seabeds, the roll bar anchors pretty much across the board will outperform non-roll bar anchors. So again, I, it's probably a good idea to have both on board a vessel. Uh, the, the fact that the Mantis anchors disassemble means that's a like, like good candidate to keep it as a second anchor stored somewhere down below. Yeah, totally. Um, we should mention that this particular Mantis is a 55 pounder and the anchors that would be more appropriate for this size of boat would be more in the 100 pound range. The mock-up that you guys built uh, for the Vulcan, this is for a 100 pound size and then the Vulcan I brought is only 21 pounds. So. With all these, envision the larger anchors, ultimately. In our discussion, it has led to very common debate over a shackle versus a swivel. So the chain has to attach to the anchor. Traditionally, a shackle is used. More recently, swivels have been introduced. The design of our bowsprit and anchor channel uh, is such that we have had to make the channel very narrow for the anchor to fit through and the chain to fit through. And it doesn't really fit a shackle. What do you think about shackles versus well, swivels? Well, personally, I'm a shackle guy. I, I like the simplicity. They're robust, easily to replace with rudimentary tools and just foolproof. However, I realize some people uh, need to use swivels for, for whatever reason. And in this case, They've designed a channel that's so narrow that a, sh a swivel is pretty much required. And the reason is, is that the, the a standard anchor shackle or a bow shackle is just too wide. The ear or even the shackle itself will hang up in this narrow slot. So my recommendation, if at all possible, is to widen this slot. And the, the problem with that is it's going to reduce the strength. They've, they've designed this fairly carefully and that's, a, that's a, just a judgment call on whether they want to do that. But, that in, in my view, it would be good to at least be able to use a shackle. 
Um, you know, these swivels, um, sometimes they have special pieces and parts and you're up here fumbling around and maybe you drop it overboard. Oh, there goes our shackle or our swivel. So now what do we do? Well, grab a shackle. Oh, no, that doesn't fit. So now we have to have a spare swivel. Yep. And swivels can be weak if they are attached directly to anchors. Again, he alluded to there's a whole debate on, the, on whether or not they're even a good idea. And I don't weigh into that very much. I have my own personal thoughts, but I realize many people uh, use swivels successfully, and I'm not going to argue with that. People often ask me about definitive answers to these questions, like what's the best anchor, what's the best road, uh, what kind of scope should I use? I just get that constantly, but there is no right answer. It's all going to depend on the variables that are unique to the individual. Yep. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you again. You betcha. Appreciate it. You bet. I actually think this is a really avant-garde design decision here where you've actually attached the anchor chain to the chain plate. I invented carbon, uh, uh, what are those called? Cleats. <laughs> Carbon cleats. Yeah. <laughs> More of a Samson post when we right. got the anchor. Oh, that, that would be to cool. It. Yeah. <laughs> this weekend is the famous Port Townsend Wooden Boat Festival. We host a coffee and coffee cake in the cockpit party on Saturday morning. Uh, if you missed our post on Patreon, this is for local Patreons uh, to attend and come take a tour of Duracell. If you missed our post on Patreon, uh, you're absolutely invited and we'd love to see you here. Uh, if you are local to the area and have been curious about becoming a Patreon of the Duracell Project, now is a great time. We'd love to have you out to the boat. So uh, without further ado, we have a couple more Patreons to thank this week. First, Chad and Jen, who Chad is from the Pacific Northwest, but they moved out to the East Coast and they just got their first cruising boat and are getting ready in a few years to head out cruising off of the East Coast. And so we're really excited for them. They got a Valiant 40 and a great boat. And also thank you to Lindsay, who is local to the area, but he grew up in the Midwest and on the Gulf Coast. And he said he built a bunch of plywood boats when he was a kid. And since he's been retired, he's gonna get back into boating and boat projects. So see you next week. <laughs>